Yeah, we were all skiing. Okay. All right. Well, good night, everybody. No, last night. So yeah. Yeah, we yeah we did. Yeah. Okay, so tonight we're going to work with um, this piece of the styrofoam, and this is uh, this is my way of repurposing something that um, I don't like to get thrown away. So um, the styrofoam that I'm using are styrofoam sheets, which you could actually buy at a craft store, but you know I never do that because why would I buy it when it comes with my eggs or it comes with the thing of meat I bought? Yes. Anyway, so I did send some of you some styrofoam. Spencer hasn't got his because Customs is going to get mad at me because it's not paper. So anyway, but it hasn't come back to me yet. So anyway, um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do some monoprints. And I don't know if we had done some monoprints before, but with the styrofoam, you can do some really neat things because you can draw on the styrofoam and create pictures. And then, you know, when you ink them and or put paint on them, they can create these monoprint cards. So, so there's the print of this one. Um, and I've done quite a few of these cards. And let's see, this one is, um, oh, this is not, no, not it. Okay, throw that one away. Here's a, here's a styrofoam, that's not styrofoam either. Sorry, I'm getting my styrofoam prints all mess, mixed up. I guess all I have are, are these ones that I've, that I've done. And that's this stamp that I've used. And, now I go back in quite often and then color them with pencil crayons. So this one is an example of that where I've gone back in with a yellow and just colored it a little bit. And I mean, my drawings are pretty abstract and things like that, but you know, you could do things like flowers or, or stuff like that. Um, this one I've gone back in with a little bit of purple and just sort of highlighted some areas and stuff like that. So um, you can do a couple of different ways of, these are just cards. Um, what you can also do is if you have your piece of styrofoam, you can cut it to the size of your card or to the size you want in your card. Maybe you don't want it to take up the whole card. Maybe you just want it to be like a part of the card or something like that. So you can make that determination as you do it. So I'm going to switch the camera now to so you can see my desktop. And oh, you know what? One of the things that we were just going to have a look at really quickly, Spencer, you wanted to show us your um, your cube. We did these last week, and so Spencer has an op cube. I'm just going to switch. Oh, it I, just gonna, I can I can do it at the end of the hour when we just show our works for today. Well, no, I want to see it now. Well, right. I'll get you Me mine. too. So we did the op art cube, and so I'll just rotate it around. This is. Oh, that looks really good. That's side two. Yeah. That's side three. Yeah. That's side four. Yeah. It's side bottom. Wow. And that's side top. That's that is really, really cool. cool. Very that's, nice. That's my that's my uh, op art cube. Oh, your um, yeah. Last your drawing is really good. good. Like it's yeah. it's making me a little dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the intent. Ooh. I know. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's really cool. Okay. My favorite of Leslie. All right. So, um, Leslie, did you actually do any? Because I know you were away uh, skiing. So, um, did you? So I, took, I took a template and then I couldn't get the timing was wrong to watch the class. So, I've been watching for the YouTube link. Okay. I haven't seen it, but it's probably coming soon. Okay. So, All right. So like I'm just gonna... <laughs> yeah. Oops. Uh, just a minute. Where am I? I'd like to do it. The Spencer's came out really cool. Yeah. It looked really neat. I'll have to go back and watch the YouTube. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Okay. So here's the one that I did. And so here's the one side. And then the next side. I did get a little lost there. You can see some lines that I kind of got lost in my thing. There's the other side and there's that side. And then there's the top. So, I have a question. So did yeah. you do, did you sort of keep your design isolated to a side of the cube? You didn't do like all over it and then see what happened? No, I, well, I just, I just did a design per square. So I just, yeah, I just did a design per square and then, um, 
put it all yeah. together. Now I noticed that Spencer actually had some of his go from one side to the next side and sort of like morph over the edge. And that's really a cool thing to do, but you have to really think about what you're doing, especially when you put but it all that's, together. That's cool there too. You have the six different op arts and they're, you know, the, the different intensity of illusion. Yeah, yeah. That's, nice. that's very nice. So um, this is actually one that I did before. The one that I was working on last week, I never finished because I just leave it in my, I did like two and then left it in there. So, okay, I'm going to switch over to the view so that you can see um, what I'm going to do. Uh, oh yeah, I, you think I'd have this down by now. Look at that, excellent. Okay, so, one of the things I'm going to do now, you can just do these in your sketchbook if you want, right? Um, like I like, I do like putting them in my sketchbook. I don't know if I have any in here. Yeah, I do. Look, there are some. So sometimes I, I just, I just do them in my sketchbook and then I'll go back and work into them, which I haven't done with these ones, but sometimes I do. Uh, not in this book, but many books I have. So Sometimes it's nice just to even have like a scrap piece of paper so that I can try out my design on in the sketchbook. And then if I need to refine it, I can I can do that too. And there's a couple of things I wanted to try tonight on the on the styrofoam before uh, before I decide what I'm going to do with it. So I'm just going to grab really quickly. I have I have some cardstock here. And that's pretty good. It's about the right size. I'm just going to make sure that my, it looks pretty square. Okay, so this little piece of styrofoam is pretty square. And the one other thing that we want to use is like a dull pencil. Now, you don't always need a pencil. You could also use a tool. I'm just going to grab this tool I have on my desk. This is a tool that people use for um, doing embossing and stuff like that. Um, it has two little, whoop, two little balls on the end. And um, so you can just see there's paint on that one. There's like a little, there's one that's smaller than the other one. So this is a nice little sort of tool for making marks, but a, a dull pencil works just fine. Dull pencil might be even better because then it's a bit thicker. Um, the other thing I wanted to try tonight is I wanted to try and make some patterns in there with some other objects, like pressing them in. So I have this cookie cutter um, that I've had for a while. And I obviously I use it for not making cookies. <laughs> and <laughs> so it's for my painting. But I was wondering if it would work if I was able to, you know, sort of get it in there and push it down. Might need something hard to press down on so I can cookie cut my hand. So that kind of made a nice little pattern. Now, whether it's deep enough for what I need to do, I don't know. I suppose that even a little hammer, I could hammer it down. Just stay right there. It only needs to be deep enough to absorb, to take the ink, right? Or, or to, to leave a negative space? Yeah, it leaves a negative space. So you don't really want the ink to run into it. So um, even if you had like a little hammer or something, I mean, I could just not break my cookie, my plastic cookie cutter. But that might That is a cookie cutter. Oh, you could have yeah. so much fun with cookie cutters. Oh, I know. Like there's so many things you could do, right? So... Especially with a hammer. With a hammer and a cookie cutter. Who knew I stole this hammer from my mom's studio, from her craft room. I was like, oh, I want one of those. I'm tool just thinking you've got all the tools. Lucky you. I know. And it's like, yeah. So it's like, is it, this is the one tool I didn't have. Who knew? Of course, it's probably been in her craft room for all these years and it probably hasn't been used forever. So, okay. All right, so this one kind of mushed right here. I don't know why, but anyway, so that's kind of a fun thing to do. Now with this 
tool. I like the pencil. I'm just going to use the pencil. So you can go in and you can start drawing things. And I'm really just pushing this down to create sort of that line. And it's very like the the foam is quite soft and, and easy to add these lines to. And I do like the pencil because it leaves a quite a nice thick line. Now, if I want, I could use this. Yeah, it's kind of pushing up oh, there. This one's kind of cutting the uh, styrofoam a bit, like popping it. That's OK. Now what am I going to do? So I'm just adding some sort of weird little designs to this just to make it sort of interesting. I don't know what I'm going to do there. I guess I won't. And then, you know, you can, it's almost like you're doing like a Zen doodle on styrofoam. I'm trying to do this quickly so you don't have to sit here watching me draw forever as always. I can't wait to show you what we're doing next week. And Spencer, you need those packages to come to you for the, what we're doing next week. I don't think I'll have the setup available. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be kind of chaotic. I guess so. And you're moving. So then I'm not going to have your address anymore. So I can't sneak more supplies to you. So you're going to have to send it to me. My address doesn't change. I use a PO box. Oh. Nobody actually knows where I live. <laughs> <laughs> you're so mysterious. Even family. Wow. That's funny. Okay. All right. So once you've got something like this, then you're going to start, you know, using your paint. I'm going to use some of these paints tonight and my messy paint palette. Those acrylics? Yeah. These are just acrylic paints. And I mean, you could use inks um, if you wanted, um, but I, I do like using acrylics. Now these are a bit more of a fluid acrylic that I'm using. And of course I can't just use one color. I need to use two because it makes it more interesting because it sort of blends the colors. I'm using a brayer. So this is the brayer. It's like a little wheel and I, we've used them before. So I'm just going to get some ink on that brayer. Put some yellow in. Guess what? I'm getting some green. I have a little sheet here. This is, you can use a piece of glass just to get some of it off. And then I'm going to brayer it on my, now these monoprints are not going to be perfect. But that's the kind of the, the fun thing about them. Um, I'm going to put a piece of paper down because I got paint on my work surface. Is that like a lid from a plastic tub or something? What? That tray that you've got the ink in? It's a Tupperware tray. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a really neat Tupperware tray and it's for, it's for luncheon meats and there's three that you can stack with a lid. And I never had a good time with luncheon meats. I would put the luncheon meats in there and they'd go bad really quickly, but it works really good for paint because now I have three little things. And if I wanted to reuse this paint, I can put the lid on it and save my paint for later. Okay, now I'm gonna lift this off. And there's my little model. 
the yard. Very it's nice. Just, yeah, it's just kind of fun, right? And then once it's dry, that's when I can start using my pencil crayons and stuff. And when, I did, when I did that with the gel print, I had too much difficulty with the blended colors. They didn't really, they didn't really stay isolated very nicely. They kind of turned not to brown, but close. I mean, so okay. like I could do like the first print okay. You know, the same basic idea with the gel prints as we're doing, but with the uh, styrofoam here. Yeah. So what's the secret to kind of keeping the colors separate? Okay, so part of it is a little bit of color theory, knowing what colors are going to do together. Yeah, well, if I failed I, that class. Okay, yeah. So this is where, where, you know, understanding sort of like the color wheel and what goes together, right? Because your, your three colors are, are blue, yellow, and red. And if you mix the blue and red, you'll get a purple. And if you mix the yellow and red, you'll get orange. And, you know, you, so what you get are these secondary primaries. And on a color wheel, if you mix colors that are opposite on the color wheel, you'll get brown or mud. So if you mix purple and green, for example, now you can do it carefully if you don't overmix your colors. Like you can see right here, I didn't brayer a lot. If I was, if I started doing this, then I'd be mixing the color, and you can see I get a real good green. But mm -hmm. I'm really just trying not to use the, not to mix the colors too much. And I'm using two colors, blue and yellow, to make you know I'm making a secondary sort of primary. I'm just okay. going to grab another piece of paper here, piece of cardstock. I'm going to lift this first. Maybe I should put some ink on my thing. So again, and I'm not putting a lot on. I'm just sort of touching it, just covering it with brayer. And then carefully setting it down, trying to get it as centered as possible without going too, too far. Oh, this one didn't go as well. So now I, because I'm talking, my ink was getting, my paint's getting a bit dry. So it works better when you have wetter ink, wetter uh, paint. So I'm just gonna add a little paint to that. I'm gonna add a little paint to this. I'm just gonna add some on here and just brayer it in. I'm gonna do something weird here. I'm just gonna add it to this again. So I'll probably end up with a double print, but because that first print is so light, I'm not happy with it. So I'd rather have a double print than a light print. So we'll see what happens. Part of it is experimentation. There, it's a bit darker, but it's definitely green because I've added that water and, and mixed it really well. So now if I add, let's see, green. Like if I add a, a red, it's gonna start to brown on me. And I mean, I have, I have um, when I was teaching class classes to kids, Oh, that's red's not working very well. I quite often taught them how to do um, color mixing because they also get brown a lot. Sorry, I'm just going to get a red. So if I put red in this, some of my paint needs to be a little bit more established. Okay, so I'm gonna add the red. And because it's mixing with the yellow, but you can see it's starting to turn into sort of a weird sort of brownish color. And that's just because I've got two colors from an opposite on the, because I've got a green and then a, a red that I'm adding to it. And it's kind of, and part of it might be just, you know, playing around with color and seeing what mixes. And, you know, if you have paints, you can, a lot of people, a lot of artists do like little 
sort of test sheets where they just sort of line up a bunch of colors and practice mixing colors. But even, you know, with something that's kind of brown, I could still go in with my pencil crayons and change the look of it. If it's starting to look a little messy because of the brown. So I could go back in and work in with this with a brighter color or something and, and color it up so that it just, you know, it's not so brown and green. It's very earthy. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I can sit here and well, like you guys aren't doing it, <laughs> so it's just me doing this, right? Or Leslie, are you doing some? I'm doing some. Oh, good. There we go. Not just me. I'm doing find op found objects, and I'm doing impressions. Okay. Things like dog forks and the yeah. end of a spoon. Yeah, yeah. you can't Finding really see it that well just because there's type on it but i'll try to turn it when i'm done with it on an well, angle you know that you might have once you get some paint on it we'll be able to see it better right yeah, well, you see the pattern much that. better once you have the paint on it so yeah you know, like all my drawings end up being very abstract because that's just how i am there's a few that I do that are more flowery or something like that, or, I mean, I don't know, you could do some of it. This is that one that was in my book, that flower one. It's quite dark now. There we go. But the nice thing about these is I can use them over and over again. And it's. You just wait for the paint to dry to use that over again. Yeah, I just, you know, I might just um, take a cloth and wipe them. I don't wash them in the sink because again, it's the sort of that I don't want the paint going down the sink because I'm careful that way. And so if the paint gets so thick on it that you can't see the pattern anymore, then I guess I could use the other side or I, then it, it becomes a piece of artwork or something. Look at this one. I love this one. Look at the way it's sort of, it's all dyed because of the paints and I might've used ink on it. But it's kind of beautiful just the way it that is. That looks like the centerpiece of a, a future collage work of yours. Yeah, it could very well be. You know, it wouldn't be the first time that I put weird things in my collages. So this one needs a lot of work. So, yeah, it's like. And do you need me to send you 20 or 30 things of acrylic paint to help you along? <laughs> no. Yeah, just put nice stamps on it. <laughs> And, uh, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna send you something back with whatever you send me. Excellent. I, I'm okay with that because uh, yeah, I know I know you are because you're a collector. I am a collector and yeah. Oh yeah. So you know there's there's things that I have that I was I was gonna ask you guys if you had any ideas of, of what to do. Creative people. I have something here. I have a bag of something, Brenda. Oh, oh. Brenda knows what these are. That I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you going to do with those? I don't know. They're sewing spools, but I have a huge bag of them. <laughs> what am I looking at? They're these little bobbins. Sewing, they're little bobbins for, um, oh, you, like you can buy that. free. Pre singer, singer bobbins. Well, they're pre uh, pre done bobbins. Pre wound. Right? Yeah, pre they come with the thread on them already, and you can't reuse them apparently. Yeah. I don't know. I I don't use them, but I know. So we got to think of something really cool to do with them because I got lots. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to be putting our thinking caps on for those. Yeah. First of all, I, I could see them in color. That would be kind of fun to paint them a little bit and then affix them to something. Yeah, well, you know, I thought, oh, we could make them into like little beads or anyway. So the other thing that I have, and these are also things that I get from Brenda. It's um, a spool. Look, I have my name on this one because it's like that, an art 
project. You, I use it for my artwork quite often, but I thought it would be kind of fun to put it in here. There's my hammer. There it is. So you mean we have Brenda to thank for these packages in the mail? <laughs> no. Those I hand <laughs> deliver. Yeah, she hand delivers those to me. Did, nice. Did I ever show you what I do with spools? I don't think you yeah. have shown them. I know what you do with spools. Leslie knows what I do. Okay, so I started one. Did you? Yeah. When it went into your stash of. Oh, when it went into. Yeah, because we did them in class. So what I yeah. do is I take old spools. And I got a couple here. Sorry, I'm leaning right into my thing. I take old spools and I paper mache them and then I paint them. And these get sent all over the world into trauma kits. And the people who are going through trauma use them for either color identification or counting, or they play games with them or whatever. And when I found this place that was doing them, my mom was doing them, they were just painting them regular colors. And I was like, well, I can make little paintings out of them. And they just love these spools. Now, the place that takes them is in Victoria. So I have to remember, I have to figure out how to get these to, to Victoria without spinning an arm and a leg. Another mm -hmm. battle with the post office, I'm sure. Well, that's good to know because if I have a trip out that direction, you can put them in my car. Oh, that's lovely. I'm glad, yes. I'm glad to learn that you send them around the globe not to induce trauma, but to help relieve it. Well, you know, part of the thing is I was working on them because they're kind of neat and people really like them. And I thought, you know, if there's, and the trauma can be all sorts of things, you know, it could be um, a child who's lost his family, or it could be um, somebody who's recovering from an accident and needs to get their, be able to move things and understand things. And I just thought if somebody's holding onto this spool and it makes them feel better, then I hope they let them keep them, right? Well, I was trying to be funny, but I just came off like a jerk. So sorry about that. <laughs> no, you didn't at all. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that it would be nice that, you know, like I could just see like a little boy or, you know, maybe he's lost everything and they're doing the trauma treatment and maybe he picks up this spool and he really likes it and it just feels nice in his hand. And that's sort of what I think about as I'm painting them all. So I've done hundreds. Anyway, but that's, that's what I do. And do you still have a few hundred left to do? Yeah, I got two big drawers down here. Okay. <laughs> so I don't, okay. Need, I don't yeah, need, I don't need to start okay. collecting again. No, not yet. I've been paper macheing them and getting them ready because the, what I'm going to do with the seniors at, at where I teach um, art is I'm going to get them to paint them at the end of February. They're going to paint a whole bunch for me. Very good. So were, were the ones that we did paper mache shade or did we just put like acrylic paint on them? I no, can't we recall. Paper, they were paper mache first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because the acrylic paint won't stick to the plastic. It just doesn't stay. Uh, and okay. I didn't want someone who's going through trauma to be, you know, picking off my design. <laughs> <laughs> that just wouldn't fly. So yeah, they're all paper mache, and I do I except for the except for the wooden ones. The wooden ones I don't paper mache because we just paint them. Uh, so I tried I to cut know. this and it didn't work. My exacto blade must be sucky. Ah, uh, poop. I was trying to square up my piece of stuff oh your stuff see now some of the things that i'm doing are not working like even like i using using this it didn't leave a really big impression so i'm not sure how that will turn out i just tried to do something thicker right there and it didn't work I've got several little circle things that i brought over but what did you use to cut your styrofoam i use a knife like an exacto yep and a metal one just 
Yeah, my that's what I tried and uh, didn't Your work. Your blade very might well. be dull. You might need a sharp blade my, to do it. And it's not. It's a new one, but it's that doesn't mean it's not garbage. Mm -hmm. So often, even new blades are crap. I actually didn't cut one tonight. Let me see. How Let's go get one of these. Go get a go get your. Is that razor. a type of? A it's your it's your razor blade. You know your heavier duty. Just your yeah, all-purpose like lines. a just your all-purpose razor blade. That'll uh, cut through the. Okay, well. Uh, better. Yeah. Oh, even... you know it was a sh shitty blade. I think. Yeah, it must have been because Full this part, one it just it's like butter. Blade. Yeah, that one went fine. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly square. I just sort of wanted it sort of square. I mean, these, the ones that I sent you, I really just cut them out with scissors really quickly just to get the shape. Yeah. Just, just to reuse the, the foam because I didn't want to waste it or whatever. So, yeah. Ah, oh, that's better. Much better. Much better. Good, good, good. So, Brenda, okay. you so. and Karen obviously know one another from a long time ago. Yeah. Do you yeah. Know each other from childhood? <laughs> I married Bill her brother. Is, Bill is my brother. Oh. So, okay. I've known Karen a few years. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Bill and I have been married more than 30 years. Wow. So. And I only have a brother. So Karen is like my sister. And I call her that sometimes too when I'm talking about her. Yeah. We're. I was so lucky. I got. I married into an awesome family because I got Brenda. And Bill's parents were awesome. They were so good to me. I think we got pretty lucky too. So even though I'm not doing this tonight, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Brenda comes the, down and, and funny, we watch movies. The, the funny thing is now everyone that's on the screen is weirdly related by marriage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, not weirdly, uh, I'm not weirdly related to you by marriage. <laughs> You're, you're genetically weirdly I'm genetically related. related to you, but not weirdly related. <laughs> but to you. my nephew married someone who's related to Karen. Yes, Beth. Oh, Beth really? Powell. Yeah. So that's my nephew. So all of us <laughs> are related. Yeah. So how? Who is who is married to who? Beth. Your nephew is married Beth. to who? Is Beth. is Beth Beth Cowan? Yeah. Your nephew so is Jaden. Yeah, is Jaden. Oh, Colin's isn't that brother. cool? Uh, yeah, I know. That's bizarre. and I used to go to Karen, Karen's jazzercise classes, so that's how I met Karen to begin with. That's uh, right. And then we ended up related. And then the, the the guy with the weirdy beardy and the other over there, I was the first <laughs> child, and then they decided to. Other one. You know, you know the rule. You know the rule of families with two children, right? The first is a test, and the second one's perfect. It's a test. Second one comes out. Oh, I, I agree with that. I like that one too. <laughs> and Leslie, I do need to tell you that Beth, friend, Bill, Bill is your older brother. Right. Yeah. And Beth is related to Bill and I, not to Karen. Like. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's that through marriage thing. It's like, right, yeah. Anybody who um, watches this YouTube video, Karen, you're going to be really, really weirded out. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe if they're watching the video, they might be related too. <laughs> yeah. So, who knows? Maybe we're all related. That's how it's supposed to be, isn't it? I think, I think so. so. <laughs> well, what happens if here oh yeah okay i'm using this i just added some water to this because it's been sitting here while we're chatting and having fun 
I'm going to try this pattern and see how it looks. It's looking a little brown and weird, but that might be okay too. Paper down. Some of these impressions are a little shallow. So now I am going to get some paint, see what that does. Now I think it works better with the brayer. I mean, if you don't have one, you can try using a brush. I don't know how well it works. I've got a brayer. So that worked out pretty good. Mm -hmm. I bought a brayer. You bought a brayer. Actually, when we were doing the lino thingamadoos, I went to buy a brayer and the brayer that I wanted was out of stock. So I bought a little handy dandy speedball kit. Oh, good. So this took me right back to my junior high days with the little cutting doodads and mm -hmm. the little pads and the brayer that I wanted. Tell them about your junior high school art teacher. The what? Pardon? Which one? Oh, Mr. Fu? Yeah. Or Mrs. Ahern. And Mr. Fu. What, what about Mr. Fu? Other than he was fantastic. He was a fun guy. Oh, he was so good. He was uh he was Japanese. No, he wasn't he was handsome, so needless to say, all the girls in the class thought he was fantastic. But he was really he was an amazing artist. And he was great with the students. Well, you know, it's great. funny. I just ta was talking to one of my art teachers from high school last night. He phoned to catch up with me because we talk, we're friends. That's fun. So, okay, so here's the first one that I did. It's dry because um, if you're not using a lot of paint, it dries pretty quickly. And then I can go back in, I'm just using, I'm just gonna use a yellow pencil crayon and start sort of, again, I'm going really fast because I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me putter around with this but I can do like really quickly just add some color to that and again you know when you're mixing colors and stuff like that um, like I'm using the yellow because of course yellow and green go great together but this is where I can start to add some different things like I've got this pink and I'm going to go in and just start adding a little bit of pink to this yellow yellow can work like a like a blender are you using uh, acrylic or ink? I used acrylic paint. Okay. Because all I have in my ink is black. Yeah. You could try doing black ink. It would be yeah. kind of interesting. I'm glad I use acrylic. Well, I'm glad you have black because there's another project I want to do. Another kind of printing sort of project we can try. So I need to come up. Great to put this on. This is gonna have to do. Hopefully, it's not too dusty. So this is, you know, like I'm just doing this, but you can see now that I've just added that little bit of pink there, and it's starting to, you know, just change the print from just being a mono print, which you could just send it the way it is, but it's never good enough for me. I always feel like I just gotta work into it a little bit more. And then that's what I do when I sit and watch movies is I sit and do this. Another good thing to do while I'm watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. How do you do that when you're eating popcorn? Oh, eating popcorn. You, you use the, oh. the left hand for the popcorn. <laughs> or maybe left just, hand for the popcorn, maybe right hand. Face, maybe just the face dip in the bowl. Oh, is that true? You just have the bowl <laughs> hanging from your, your chest and just stick your tongue out to be like a lizard. Just put it in the hood of your hoodie and then you could just lift it. It would be forming to wherever you needed it to go. Yeah. There you go. No anyway. idea how weird this is going to be, but we are going up and out. That's all right. Uh, So I'm working back and forth between this pink and the yellow oh. because I want to sort of blend. Ooh. 
unfortunately, I think I have a little, my ink is a little thick and my Add a bit uh, of water. impressions are a little, not my ink, my acrylic. Shoot. You spray it with a little bit of water. I love having spray bottles and, you know, I just, they break on me so quickly. I have one, my favorite bottle is a, what is that stuff you spray? Febreze, it's an old Febreze bottle, but it stops spraying. So today I found a sprayer head that fits on it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's kind of beautiful to be in my studio for so long. Okay, so I'm just using my fingers to press it down, to rub it. What does it say oh, on it? It says studio water. You got to turn it the yeah. other way for us. It's upside oh. down. It is, yeah. There. It says studio water. Oh, I see. Okay. So here's my thing with my impressions, okay. which aren't so great. Mary, if, you paint, if you paint over the last two letters, you'll have stud water. Stud water. <laughs> Woo. Give that okay. to Bill. <laughs> I'm going to just switch to um, Leslie's. I'm going to add your spotlight there. So Leslie, don't show us what you did. Can everybody see it? I have to stop my share, I guess. Oh, yeah, now I can. Oh, that looks good. So I don't remember which way I was working it, but this. I don't think some of my grooves are deep enough or I just have too much paint. And then this is what it looked like so far oh it looks really good though it looks so good i think it came out pretty cool it does yeah they're just they're a little bit you know what sort color, of what color paints did you use uh red and orange with a little bit of yellow and the red and orange just took over mm -hmm. uh, i don't really have a big tray to work in i'm gonna have to find that because i'm just using an old microwave plate that I use for all kinds of things. And now everything is. That works, you know, and, and like, again, like what I do is I'm, I'm working with my tray and then this is actually plastic, but you can use like a sheet of glass. I, I had a sheet of glass that I like using, but. Um, That's a really good idea. Plastic. Yeah. Let's, let's see your special brayer, Leslie. Okay. Hold on one sec. So it's a proper printing brayer. Yep. I, there, there's a light behind me. Sorry. No, nope, I can see it. No, nope, I can see it. So, and it's a nice rubber. It's just a speed ball. I don't know if yeah. you can see the type on it, but I really, really like the head on this, like the, the actual rubber. Yeah. You know, having a, um, I'm just going to go back to, um, am I yeah. Oh, yeah yeah okay okay um having like you can get different types of brayers right and like this one is my favorite it's probably an old speedball one yeah it is and it's a it's got a rubber it's a rubber brayer to clean this I don't I don't run it under water very much I usually just brayer yeah. onto a rag and stuff like that if it gets super thick with paint later on I can I can get it off but I you have to work okay. at it but I don't yeah. like running it underwater, even though it's it's pretty old, this one. And I can see it's rusted just because I've had to put it underwater. Um, then you can get harder um, rubber ones. They're like a hard rubber and they're not as nice for doing this type of thing, but I have a bunch of those too. Yeah, that's what I was finding was harder rubber and I wanted the softer rubber. Yeah, the softer is better for, for mono prints and stuff like that. So what I'm going to show you now is I'm that's just part of my you. problem when I was rolling it is I had the harder the, the harder the rubber is the harder rubber and it probably just pushes it around a little bit instead of maybe you have to maybe have a lighter touch on that. Well, I, that's so, that, that's the other obvious point. All right, next week we are doing what I call articulated feathers. Oh, and. This is one of my favorite projects. I did this, I was, it was somebody had sent me some stuff. And of course, when I have stuff, I'm sitting there like those bobbins, I'm trying to figure out something to do with them. So I, I made these years ago and they're, 
they're kind of like feathers. And I made three of them, but they took me a long time. And then I switched it over to making just smaller ones. And now I do very small ones, but they're really kind of fun to do. And they're all made are out they, of- uh, Cut out of cardboard or no. crystal board or? No. So Leslie, you should have received some of these in your little package. Well, I got the, uh, let me look in my package. Did you get the, oh, they, they're in your large package. Uh, I got the smaller package that had the yeah. egg no. cartons so and uh, what you're going to get in your package that I'm sending you is this ribbon. Oh, cool. Yeah, she gave me all these ribbons. I have <laughs> millions of them. I remember you showing them to me. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Anyway, so in your package, you'll get these ribbons. You'll get the little metal wires for the bottom. And what we need to be able to do is gesso them. And um, we're going to have to sew them. So Spencer, I put a needle and some thread in yours. <laughs> I think it's this box that I'm expecting. <laughs> I was just thinking you might, I thought you might not have a needle and thread. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna, I'm not that manly. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't I'm know. Not, I have I Maybe I'll just send him a needle and some thread. I'm a bachelor. <laughs> I, I know how to sew. I'm not great, but I can, I can sew. Well, there. Um, anyway, so I sent you. It ain't ever gonna get here with, with it never gets stabbing there. things. In. It's got you got stabbing things. You got noose material. You've got I got you've money got <laughs> material that they're gonna nuke an X-ray and you got denim. You know, yeah, the, the, you're like importing a whole person. How big is this box? You know, my mailbox is only small. You Two know? envelopes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so. Hopefully, Spencer. I'm not that make. strong to carry it home from the post office. I can't wait to see what arrives. If it some of it comes or all of it comes or anyway. So anyway, so we're gonna make these next week. Um, I'm gonna do them with my seniors tomorrow. So we'll see how they do with them. But uh, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna gesso ribbon. We're gonna have to gesso them and then paint them. sew them together. Brenda, to you can play along on this one. <laughs> Did you get your Why? did you get your ribbons? Yes, no, you know? no I, I don't have I don't have my ribbons. Sides. She doesn't have her ribbons yet. Did I change it? No, I didn't change it. So yes, I, I actually redid the packages today. So I'm gonna put them in the mail tomorrow. <laughs> so one of the funny things that came in my envelope was the the remnants of what a stamp would have been on. <laughs> like going to peel off. <laughs> Well, I was working on my stamps. I didn't mean to send that to you. <laughs> but what are you going to make with it, Leslie? Yeah, now you have to. Use I it. have the clue. Yeah. <laughs> I've got this really fancy envelope that came oh. in the mail. Me too. And I, I want to understand going. why the upper right hand <laughs> sides of both of yours is yeah. missing. Is that, is that like in the instructions? You got to cut it out. Yeah, they cut out the stamp for me because they know I collect stamps. So they're sending they're the stamps back to me. <laughs> So and there weren't instructions in the envelope that told you to, 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 to cut it like a cadaver. You actually just instinctually knew to do that. Yes, I just know. Yeah, Heard actually, it. both of these guys are trained. They both know that I collect stamps. This is not the first time I've sent stuff to Leslie oh. saying, hey, send back my stamp. <laughs> yep, you didn't even time. have to send that. Well, since you rejected all my Canada stamps, I'm going to send you all my duplicates of U.S. and other foreign stamps. Okay. There's quite a few. Hundreds, there's quite a few hundreds of them. So. <laughs> well, you can you can you can you can work on your stamp collection, which is what I was tinkering with tonight. I was putting, I was putting my Belgium stamps in my my little my little keepsake. I'm not collecting stamps, but I inherited these, and I thought I would. I thought I would uh, put them together, and I uh, I will deal with the USA ones differently. But for my international ones, I thought I would just create a little book and put them together like that. Here's Belgium, Belgium. That's nice. 
I'm just going to do this for my European ones and call it good. And I'll send you all my duplicates and triplicates and stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I, I was just putting away, I'm, I just put away my stamp collection because I only work on it. I usually only work on it once a year, but I'm going to work on it twice a year this year. So I'm well, going to have to work it. on it three times when I send you several hundred stamps. <laughs> I might. <laughs> They'll probably I'm go so through excited. the mail easier than your package of things. Yeah, you might not have to fight with the post office. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. <laughs> and maybe, maybe I'll even use my glue stick to, stay, to, to add some of those low value stamps to the, to the base for postage to get it across the border. And only if they're, they, they yeah, only if they're, that. um, uncanceled yeah well i have uncanceled i have a few mint and i have some uncanceled so yeah see now i was gonna put some mint um american stamps on your uh, envelope to come back to me but i didn't want to use them <laughs> i have i have i have a bunch of mints from my plate blocks and stuff when i was a kid yeah yeah um, well so. we'll see what we'll, we'll see how how much i want to get rid of good stamps to send All right. or something That'll be fun. It's all she's, fun. So. She's worth it. <laughs> oh, I'm only showing. Just a minute. I'm just going to add spotlight here. Oh, very nice. So the uh, one on this side over here was the one I did first, and then yeah. I put more ink on it, and I got this one. I yeah, still think really some grooves need some work, and then yeah, I'll just go back into them with pencil. Hey, let's say on the bottom. You have three lines that are going through that bottom circle. What did you use to make those lines? Um, over here? Yeah, those three one, lines. I used a dog comb. Okay. <laughs> you oh, know, of we, course. Have, we have a, so you use a comb. So it's a metal comb with tines. Yeah. That are you know, the other that, thing I was thinking of them. is you could probably use things like. Um, you know, sometimes you can get those little things with wheels and they, for doing the edge oh, of the right. or something like that. Yeah. You could use things like that to make some patterns. I, I think I have one from my kid's toy that's like a little zigzag. I have to try that. I, have to I, I get like Play-Doh ones and I got rid of so many of those things, but this, that would be exactly what you'd need. Oh, uh, see, now I we all have to go to garage spoon. sales. <laughs> and I did something else that used poked holes but it didn't come out very well this is the bottom of a salt shaker yeah. it's, it's a little cube yeah but otherwise they're just lids that i pushed in it and nice. here they didn't come out well i used the bottom of a this is an, an eraser one of these oh yeah thing and i just pushed the eraser out and tried to use the end of it Oh, I see. Yeah. It, look at that. It, look at you using tools. Yeah, just looking around to see what will actually make an impression. Well, you made an impression on me, that's for sure. So, okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to spotlight. Room spotlight. Okay. All right. So I guess we're pretty much done. We'll continue working on your mono prints or whatever. And if you want to show next week what you finish or what you do or whatever. Spencer, hurry up and move so you can get working on stuff again. <laughs> that, uh, that feather seems awfully complicated. Is that a one day piece? I hope we can do it in one day. And I'm hoping you can do three of them. So we put gesso on this ribbon. And then once it's dried, we cut out the form. Well, we're going to sew it onto the, onto the piece, little metal stem first. So we're going to sew it, gesso it, paint it, and then put little dots and stuff on it. And it, it, we're going to cut them out in that form or Whatever they're like. already... Now, there's some, these ones that I worked on before, I actually tried to fray the, the ribbon but it was yeah. super hard to do. It didn't like it's woven yeah. together really hard. And I thought maybe it'd be easy to just fray it, but it, like these ones I frayed a bit, but you know, one of my students was able to fray one pretty good, but um, like this one's, you can see I've oh, yeah. frayed it a bit, but yeah. 
Can, but I don't uh, think you need to. Can we use white acrylic in lieu of gesso? Because I really don't want to be buying more paint. Yeah, you know, you can use, um, if you have like house paint or anything like that, you can just, you just need to get a nice white base so that the reason why you want to gesso it is because it helps the color show more pure. If you, if I was just to put purple on top of the, the green of that I thought, ribbon. I thought, it was, I thought it was to stiffen the ribbon. No, it's really just to get the color to sit nicely because the, the paint can also stiffen it too, right? But it's to make the color more true. And do we, do we paint before we sew the metal no, thing on? I think you're going to sew it first. The thing, the nice thing about sewing it, if you paint it first and then try and sew, you're going to be puncturing the paint. It's harder yeah. to sew because you're going through plastic paint. But if you sew it on first, then you're actually painting your, your, like, if you look closely, <laughs> the sewing is not neat. Oh, I don't know if you can well, see I it. gathered to do three in an hour, but, but how, how long does it take the paint to dry? Not very long, because you don't use a lot of gesso. You just need a little layer just to, just so, just so you can see the color, so you don't see the green. Right. Well, how about unless you make it green, green flowers are cool. I mean, green green feathers are cool. Yeah, yeah tropical yeah. birds. That's true. Very true. So, and anyway, we can play around with it. And if you don't want a gesso, you could try without gesso and and see what happens, right? Because this is all part of the experiment, right? Seeing what works and what doesn't. So, articulated feathers. Oh. Anyway. All right, so I will see you guys next week and we'll play some more. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Good All night, right. everyone. Good night. Good night. Got, now I have to work on my cubes too. Yeah, you've got a lot of homework to do. <laughs> a lot of homework. <laughs> okay. See you later. All right, see you later, guys. Night. See you. Good night. <laughs>